Right, so despite appearances, the lawn behind me is absolutely awful. Today, we're gonna to sort it out. So join me in a sec, and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Throughout history, men have always been drawn to grass. Whether it be in the park, a sports ground, or simply in your own garden, there's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbors. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year, whilst you create your own lawn journey, achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. All right, so we'll just have a quick walk over the lawn. This is the bottom area, which doesn't see any light from October onwards till now. And it's not seen that much, to be honest. So you see it's had a bit of disease damage, a lot of worm cast damage, and just general winter damage. So it's very patchy. But in the main, we've got good coverage. So I know this lawn will come back no problem at all looks bad but we can sort it got a bit of a it's a rye grass that but it's not a rye grass that we want so i'll get my fork on that and i've actually walked over this morning and uh, got a load out i'll show you what i got out but this area is really bad so this really does need some attention just need sun just need some sunlight i'm going to do it in two stages we're going to do this bit after in a few weeks once all these flowers off the trees have off the plants, off the pieris and the azalea have gone. So today we're just going to concentrate on Steve's lawn and then we can crack on with that other side at a later date. Steve's not getting too upset with me at the minute because he's got that side going on which looks okay. Just cut it with a cylinder in its first cut since we've uh, done the renovations. Just getting on top of that growth now because we don't want to get out of hand, we want to keep it nice and short. So we've got a bit of seed germination as well. Just a few red tips poking through, but honestly it's cold this morning. It's Easter Monday, I always work Easter Monday. I don't think I've ever had an Easter Monday off really, maybe one. But yeah, let's get the machines out. Well, they're already out, I lie. Scarifier, hater. Cylinders already out, as I've just said, because I've cut that. Jack's magic in the back of the van. Grass seed, streamer blower, tripod. Me, we're good to go. So the first job today is a scarifying. Showed you this before, for those of you who haven't seen it underneath. I'll just quickly show you. It's got blades, as I say, blunt blades. I have got the new ones at home. It's just getting around to changing them but we can just keep lowering the height of the machine to give us that depth that we need. And then we can uh, get a bit more use out of these before we change them. It's just laziness, really. So I really want to get into this today. I'm going to really drop it down and really give it a good going over because we've got a bit of annual meadow grass in there, a few other bits and bobs that I don't really want in there, and hopefully that will get rid of most of it. And then once we've scalped it, we can have a quick trek over and uh, the annual meadow grass will be easier to see that stuff that grows really low and just creeps along which you can't see through all this foliage so let's get on with that Always amazes me how much stuff comes out. Got a, quite a close up there. Looks awful, doesn't it? But I'm going to scalp all this top growth off and overseed, and then we'll get with the Jack's magic. But first of all, it's time for that favourite part of the day again where we get the rake out. 
and it's getting hot now because I can't take my top off because I've got my mic attached so I'm going to have to just sweat this one out with you so bear with me and I'll get sorted. Just thought I'd show you some of the stuff we brought up and raked up so you can see willow leaves, willow like flower head things that fall down, twigs, just all that was in the lawn so it's good to get that up and uh, away so we don't have to worry about that. Still quite a lot in there but we'll get on it now with the rotary and uh, pick that up, do it on number one and then we'll get on with the cylinder and just take uh, take that off. Why aren't we just going on with the cylinder straight away? Because the cylinder doesn't have any suction and it won't suck up all this debris that's still left from the, uh, you know, because I can't pick every little grain of uh, scarifyings up. So we'll go with the rotary to do that and then the cylinders to take off all the rest of the top growth and then we can get on with some seeding. So I've just been over that with the rotary and we're quite bare actually aren't we? Some areas where we really do need to do a bit of scratching first. So I've got a nice little tool that I've just found uh, around the back of Steve's house, which I used to have actually. Uh, it's going to come in really handy here today. You'll have seen one before, but I'll let you know what it is when I do it. But here it's just very, uh, very flat, very uh, like, like a flat pan, even though it's on a slope. And if we don't scratch this up before we put the seed on, it'll just wash off. So it's important that we, uh, this is probably the most important job of today really. That we're going to do. So I did film me cutting with the rotary but then when I came back to my phone it had uh, stopped and wasn't even on the camera uh, so I don't know what went wrong there so you've missed that one so I apologize for that but I'll definitely make sure I film part two which is uh, going over it with the cylinder. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is that is we're going to even flatten, flatten all that soil even more so it's even more imperative that we get on with that scratching. Uh, in the main it's okay but where there's just big patches um, like here for example the seed will just run off that so we need to mash that up with a, either a fork or this little tool that I've got. So we'll get on with that. I'm on a time limit because I'm going to the match this afternoon I'm leaving here at half one so I've got an hour and a half as it's midday so best get moving. So you see what I mean? It's all flat now. So we'll get that to like, and we'll ruffle that up and we'll just drop a bit of seed in as well. Like we did in the last video on the other side, where there's like patches like this. We'll just ruffle that up and drop a few grains in just to aid that patch recovery. It is a bit of a nightmare this land because it just doesn't see the sun at all you got all that hedge and then you've got a big tree there so when the main look, look at the sun now coming you can just see it through the tree there and it's not even I know it's not out but when it is out it's not casting uh, it's just casting shadows on the lawn as you can see so it doesn't really get going this lawn till May June when it's higher up um, so we'll sort it it's uh, a challenge but one I accept and one we will get right. So this is the uh, tool I was talking about. This is a wolf garden one, but you can get them in other makes. It's on a pivot there, so as you uh, push it, it moves forwards, but it doesn't scarify because the blades are pointing back. But as you pull back, it then scarifies, and then you push it forward, and it pulls back, for example, like that. So it's scarifying there, and then you can push it back, and then go like that. So it's a nice easy way just to create those little grooves again that we squashed in the bigger areas like down here. And it is taking some vegetation up, but what we can do is we can just blow those off or rake them up because the raking or the blowing won't disturb the, uh, the grooves like going over it again with a mower or something. So we're just going like that. It's quite labour intensive, I wouldn't want to do a massive lawn with it. 
but it just solves a little problem. And it solves a problem where the scarifier can't reach, like up against the wall up there. I can't get right close, but I could just go up with it like this and just uh, give it a little scarifier. But in the main, I don't really worry too much about that. I just strim it because I know I'm never going to get it uh, perfect. You see uh, what effect we're having. There we go. Sorted. And then we can just get our brake. And just rake it off just nice and gently. Just rake it onto the road and then we'll just pick it up off the road. Loads more of the uh, little twigs and branches and seed heads off the tree off the willow coming up as well but you see now we've just got a nice little tilty area for that seed to sit in and uh, not wash off job done right so we're good to go i've done all my ruffling up so it looks nice nice and uh free now and the seed can just fall into all those little grooves same over at that bottom end there done up the top side as well behind that wall just a little bit in the middle there doesn't really need it anywhere else so I've got me a seed in there five kilograms of Berenbrug extreme I'm gonna go on there that's a hundred square meters that works out at 50 grams a square meter which is uh, I'm happy with that and that's gonna Fill in these gaps nicely and just give us a nice lawn overall and then it will look something like this hopefully fingers crossed so let's get on with that and then we'll get on with uh, the jack's magic also what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open that up to 32 at uh, that uh, rate there on the the green uh, spindle thing there which is uh, your regulator I'm confident enough to just go on at 32. That doesn't mean anything to do with grammage per square meter. That's literally just how fast it falls out. Seed comes out quite slow in comparison to fertilizer because there's no weight behind it. So I'll know that going on to 32, I'll have more than enough to do several passes with that. But if you're not confident, you can just lower that down to whatever you want and uh, take your time with it and just do multiple passes, multiple directions, and you'll get the job done nice and accurate. Nice bit of seed on there now. All gonna get raked into those. Well, not all. That would be stupid of me to say. It's not all gonna get raked into those grooves, but some of it will, some of it won't. But the bits that do will germinate quicker and better. But it's all about just getting an even coverage at this point. I just have to do by hand by the edge because you can't get it all the way up to the edge by the uh, with the spreader. The long gear. Nice bit of seed there and there as well. So, looking good. It's a time now, and we just did that bit up there in that top corner. That's like my little uh, turf nursery up there, so if I have any, when I get that looking decent and I have any uh, problems anywhere, I'll just take a bit from there and uh, replace it in uh, with the lawn where needed. Say like you get a patch of annual meadow or a weed grass or something that comes in, you just wanna quickly, you might do a, I think they call it a Dutchman in the wood turning industry where you uh, replace a bit of wood with another. And we do the same with the grass over there. And we've also got that little uh, slither on the other side next to the wood, which we can take from as well, because we know that's the same. So now it's time for Jack's Magic. Okay, so we're at that time of the day again where we want to spread our Jack's Magic. Same drill as always. Rake. Doesn't have to be this rake, can be any rake. But this rake's a good one. It's a landscaper's rake from, uh, if you live in Britain, from Screw Fix Direct. It's a rough neck. 36 inch so that's what that is so you don't need to leave comments asking what it is because I've told you and if you do then that means you're a slider and I don't like sliders even though I'm one myself on videos I don't like people sliding on mine obviously um, no I've never thought about buying a compost spreader I've got one it's called a rake I won't be buying one because they're paying to store um, 
they're about three, four hundred pounds for the for the best ones, which is what I would buy because you don't buy cheap in my game. If you buy cheap, you'll end up replacing it ten times before you actually uh, would if you uh, bought a, a decent one. Like jeans, if you bought a decent pair of jeans, and ten years later they're still as blue as the day you bought them, but then you bought other jeans which aren't as dear maybe and then you bought several pairs in the same time frame because they faded in the wash. So it's the same, similar thing really. So we just get our rake, which is classed as a compost sprayer, isn't it today? So if you want to be picky, yes, I have thought about buying one because I've bought one. And we just rake it out. We're not disturbing the seed. Don't worry about that because this is just floating over the surface. The rake's barely touching the soil and the soil and the top um, the compost is so light it's just it's just being dragged on the surface and, and leaving that seed where it is you know if you were to get a microscope out and actually like look underneath and make a geographical reference on a GPS device of where your seed was and, and where it ends up yeah it might move a millimetre but that's fine it's not like we started at the top of the lawn and it's all going to end up at the bottom. We'll just do that. Not uh, bad stuff today, this, this is nice. It's been uh, at the middle of my pile, so it's kept dry and we've had a bit of rain overnight. Um, so it's not saturated or anything like that. It's spreading really nice. Soon dries out, even though we've had quite some, like I just say, some rain overnight, some quite heavy rain. But this is drying out already. So we'll have to be on this with the watering now, once we've done this over this next week, because there's none due now. So we'll have to uh, keep on top of that, just keep coming every day, a bit of a ritual. Cost me a fortune in diesel, because we're right in the bottom of a massive hill here, where we are. And I know it's when I come down, my gauge like starts at full, and then as I leave it, it's on empty because it's, uh, such a drag going up and down every day. Right, that's it. So we'll just rate that up. That's all the stuff that we're going to take off. So that could stay on the lawn if need be, it'll just rot down, but um, if we're going to rake it and it's there in a the big pile, just take it off and save a job. Okay, so that's the Jack's Magic on. All that's left here to do is to water. That'll be tomorrow now. I'll start watering tomorrow. And then we'll have to just keep on it twice a day until that seed germinates. Then we can get on with some uh, soil pro and uh, join me on the journey and I'll show you what and when to put on. We had a bit of an issue here last year, didn't we? When I first seeded, we had a big heavy downpour and it all washed away. So it's a good job we left this side because if we'd have had some heavy rain, it would have happened. Because it's on a hill, the, the top dressing is like an avalanche almost. It just comes down like that and washes away. So we've got the opportunity now just to hand water and hopefully by the time we do get some heavy rain, that'll have all degraded down. The seed will have come through, meaning we're not gonna end up with a nice lush border here. So that's it for today. Hope oh, you've enjoyed this Easter Monday special. I'm off to the match now. So until we meet again, take care.